Yo, so when I was a youngin, back in like 8th grade, I definitely didn't make the best decisions compared to some other kids. You know, sneaking out, dumpster diving, stealing oh candy God. bars from the local gas stations, all of those typical young adolescent shenanigans. But one winter night, me and this friend, we'll call him Ethan, decided it would be an amazing idea to sleep on the roof of the elementary school near my house. And when you're a kid my age, any sort of plan that makes no sense logically makes Five every bit time, of sense we had every single detail planned out to a t from what we tell our parents to what we would do with the cops came we had everything memorized to the heart and we were completely confident in our ability in pulling this off all there was to do now was to wait 7 p.m hit and by that time the sun was well set i got the text from him on my ipad and it was go time the first stage of this plan was in motion i walked downstairs confidently and i asked my mom in the most polite way i think i have ever talked to her oh dear mother of mine may i please go and spend the night at ethan's house tonight now she wasn't aware of any of the tomfoolery ethan and i have been up to so she decided to say yes i text ethan letting him know it was a success on my side and as we predicted his grandparents had also said yes and agreed to him spending the night at my place i pack up my backpack with all of the essentials my ipad and that was all i had in the bag was <laughs> my fucking ipad we met up in the middle of the road in front of the houses between ours and all we did was exchange a grin sin sin city was maybe knowing that it was showtime now it was still way too early to go and get set up on the roof as it was still early in the evening and there was still more we had to prepare so to pass the time me and ethan walked down the singular main road to the small city i used to live in we didn't really do much besides act mischievous in the grocery store we fucked about for about a few hours and it was eventually 10 p.m time to strike we waltzed up to that school and hopped up on the roof i should mention that this school was built in a hill so the roofs were partially low and easy to get up onto there was also these weird circle holes like you know how target has those like red brick walls with the big circles cut out mix that with the way the drainage system was set up along with the target circles and the low roofs I mean, come on, it was, it was practically begging to be slept on. We climbed up and found our spot, you know, we were set, except we weren't at all. It was cold as hell, we had no food, and all we had was my godforsaken iPad. Yo, sorry for the interruption, this is by far the most editing I've put into a video, and I hit the DaVinci Resolve limit so I can no longer put any images, so try your best to visualize the rest of the story once again, I am truly sorry. We needed to rethink what we wanted to do and fast, as it was only getting colder by the minute. The obvious answer would be to just leave the roof and have an actual sleepover like what regular middle schoolers do, but we were determined to get that, you know, sleep on the school roof achievement. We left the roof, but only to gather the necessary supplies to make this a mission success. We trotted back over to Ethan's house for stage four, part one of this death defying plan. We snuck into Ethan's house to get blankets. And now that I sit and think about this, why would we have to sneak into his own house when there are plenty of good excuses for his grandparents to wake up like, oh, I was cold, I needed to grab a blanket, and then we could just pretend to head back over to my house. It, w it was such a simple plan. But alas, we were sneaky and slipped in and out of the house like little, little snakes and left with three comically large blankets. And I'm not lying, the blankets were fucking massive. Regardless, we were back on track to the school and made it back in about five minutes. It was really, really close to our houses. But don't forget, we still needed snacks, and the gas station was about a mile there and back. But it was closing in on 11 at night, and miners where I lived had a midnight curfew. If we got caught out past midnight, it was game over. So we thought out the best possible plan of how to go and get snacks. Ethan tossed the blankets up on the roof, and we speed walked the whole mile to this gas station and made it. We picked out a few snacks, and we were ready to leave and go back to our rooftop hideout. We got two cans of Pringles, some candy bars, and I think two beef sticks. Those like really hard to eat ones. They have like two layers and all that. Anyways, we also took a box of condoms and a can of whipped cream because we were gonna pull off the funniest prank of all time. 
to any middle schooler. Now, Ethan had bigger balls than me, and he didn't pay a dime for any of the snacks that he picked out. You know, he got that five finger discount. I paid for one of the cans of Pringles. Now, this gas station was right next to the local fire department, and there were some trucks and cars parked outside, so we took one of the condoms and expanded it? I don't know if there's like a word for opening the condom and stretching it out. <laughs> Anyways, we took the hand expanded condom and put some whipped cream in it and set it on the edge of one of the truck beds. We giggled and ran, ran away back towards the elementary school. But as I mentioned before, we were still a mile away and it was nearing midnight. We wanted to get back. No, no, no. We needed to get back as soon as possible. The walk home was a straight shot and on the side of the sidewalk, there was like a ditch of grass and every time we saw any vehicle driving past, we would hurry and jump in the ditch to try and hide. Being out there felt like a damn war zone. Adrenaline pumping through our veins and all that bullshit. Now, realistically speaking, running into the ditch probably made it way more obvious that we weren't supposed to be out there compared to, you know, just walking like a regular fucking human. What the, what were we doing? <laughs> But at last, we made it back to the school and we climbed back on the roof, grabbed our blankets and walked to our little camp out. We set one of the blankets on the bare roof to cushion our bodies from the stabby roofing material that they used. And we each used one of the blankets. This was, this was the pinnacle of success. This was the height of our lives. Everything was going according to plan. Luckily enough, I was able to guess the password for the school's Wi-Fi and we laid on the roof under big blankets, watched shitty YouTube videos, and ate some fucking Pringles. <laughs> that was it. We could calm down for a while and rest up. Only one more thing to do, and that was to wake up in the morning and go home. Or was it? See, we couldn't just wake up at 7 in the morning and walk home. Other people exist too, and would obviously see us two gremlins hopping down from a school roof at 7 in the morning with blankets and a fucking iPad. Before we went to bed, I set an alarm on my iPad for 4 in the morning so we could get up, get our shit and leave. Mission success. Eventually, we both agree that it's time for bed due to it being nearly 1am now, meaning we had to wake up in 3 hours to go home. Surprisingly enough, I fell asleep with what seemed like instantly, and it felt like I didn't even sleep at all before that wretched apple alarm sound was blaring in our faces, letting us know that it was time to split and dip. And you know how when it's winter and you wake up at night without your blanket and it feels like you got teleported to Antarctica in your sleep? Imagine that, but a thousand times worse because you're in shorts and a hoodie at 4am on an elementary school roof and it's still winter. Nevertheless, we packed up our shit and we left the school. We left a can of Pringles on the roof for whatever reason and I can't remember but I'm pretty sure it was like our moon landing flag. I walked Ethan to his house and he went in with all his blankets and I walked home with my backpack and iPad in hand. I walked in my house silently and made my way up to my room and got a good eight hours of sleep. When I woke up and went downstairs, my mom asked, why did you come home so early? All I could say was, wanted to. Anyways, that's a story. Bye!